to extend that thanks and, and appreciation for sharing this special day. So you may be seated. This evening, who gives this woman to be well? A mother. to see the smiles. That's good stuff. So, um, the, the biblical part of marriage started a long, long time ago, um, back in, in Genesis chapter 2 area, um, where uh, God, you know, he gives his first thoughts on marriage, and he said, for this reason, a man and a woman will leave their father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. And that's where we're here tonight to celebrate what God has put together. And the excitement. I know through spending the last few weeks with y'all and, and talking through and um, getting to know each other a little better and, and um, just going through things, you know, I, I'm so excited because I can see um, the love that God has for you and the love that He's put together there. So um, in, in Mark chapter 10, you know, we're moving on from way back when in Genesis to, to Jesus' time and Jesus' words in Mark chapter 10, Jesus says, Therefore, what God has joined together. Let no man separate. Jesus tells us the importance of marriage and God's view in, in that. So what makes a marriage happen and work? We, we've spent a lot of time talking about that. <laughs> you know, we, we've had some good talks um, about that. And, you know, God's very clear on, on what makes marriage work. And that's, that's a love for Him and that's a love for one another. And your love for one another, surrounded by His love, goes a long ways and it helps make that work. Um, in 1 Corinthians 13, um, you know, what, what's kind of quoted as the love chapter in the Bible, um, you know, he goes through a whole bunch of different things that make up true love. And for marriage to work and for marriage to be successful in good and easy times and also the tough times, we got to show each other all these different types and these different characteristics of love. So in that chapter, it starts out, love is patient and love is kind. Love never boasts. It does not envy. It is not rude or selfish. It is not easily angry. And it does not hold grudges. Love always protects, trusts, hopes, and always lasts. Love never fails. So for love never to fail, God set it up to continually work to show that. You know, and that, that's what we've talked about a whole lot over the last few weeks is, you know, how, how God's kind of set it up. And sometimes it's easy and sometimes, you know, life, life rolls on and, and it's easy to love. And there are some days you, you got to work hard. <laughs> and, and um, you know, I love that y'all have that and have that understanding and, um, you know, have, just have that passion and, and love for one another. And it's easy to see talking to you. It's easy to see come out. And, um, you know, so lining up with that, I think y'all do that perfectly. And so, you know, when we're, when we're talking about it, it's patient, it's kind, it does not envy, it is, does not boast, it's not rude, selfish, easily angered, and it doesn't hold grudges. And, and like I said, sometimes all those are really easy, sometimes we have to work to make sure that that is what our love is doing. Um, In Ephesians 5, God gives us instructions to husbands and wives. And, you know, we, we also talked about this. This is one of, kind of one of the mis, most misquoted scriptures because a lot of times in today's society and, and a lot of times when people may not know exactly what the word says, they take it to where the wife is supposed to be in a certain area and the husband, you know, is in their area. And I think they completely miss the whole point of what, this you know this chapter and these verses tells us, um, you know, for for wives these instructions it starts with the wives and and it says wives are to submit to their husband, but that doesn't mean you're his servant. And and you know both of your views that way you know it, it's not a servant. It's you lifting your husband up every day to be the best husband and the best man he can be in life, and to walk alongside of him on an even level all the way through. That's what a submissive, loving wife does. That she, it's not somebody to be stepped on. It's not somebody on a lower position. 
it is there to lift him up. Because if you move on in that chapter, the guy's got a lot more instructions and a lot more things that they got to do. But that, again, it doesn't mean he's in a position of power and, and lord over you. It means you work together so that he can be the man that he's supposed to be. And, and that your love can grow and go easy. Um, and with that, you know, like I said, there's a lot more there. So um, it, it simply starts out in that, in the husband's part, it simply starts out by saying, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Now that's a hard big commitment because Christ gave his life for the church. He gave everything for that. And so when us husbands were commanded to do that, you know, we got to figure that out as we go. It's not always easy, and then sometimes you have to figure it out. But it's what God's called us to do. And and for your marriage and for each other and to make her the best uh, wife and and friend and and companion, you have to be that. And for him to be the best, you have to lift him up and help him be that. You know, and and that's that's the beauty of marriage and how that works it out. Um, It goes on to say, love your wives, um, and we must love our wives as we love ourselves more than we love ourselves. Um, we're taking care of them in every area and every aspect while they're returning the favor and lifting us up. So with these instructions, that leads us on to some vows. So as, as we go through these vows, I'll read through them and you will answer if you wish but I will <laughs> and, and we'll just go through um, we'll do the repeating ones here in a minute so these you just just give me your answer at the end of them so Tanner you'll be first <coughs> Tanner will you have Taylor to be your wife to live together in marriage as God tells us will you love her comfort her honor her and keep her in sickness and in health for better or for worse for richer for poorer Forsaking all others, keeping yourself only to her as long as you both shall live. Taylor, will you have Tanner to be your husband, to live together in marriage as God tells us? Will you love him, comfort him, honor him, and keep him in sickness and in health, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, forsaking all others, keeping yourself only to him as long as you both shall live? All right, may I have the rings now? Do you have them? <laughs> yeah, I love the pocket dress. Beautiful. All right, with the ring. So the ring is a beautiful symbol. It, it's the reason why we're wearing it. It reminds us, but it reminds us of our, our never-ending love for each other, but also God's never-ending love for us. Um, they're made of precious metals, and, and they have stones on them for a reason. Only the best for each other. And, and only giving the best for each other is what keeps things going. You know, and, and, in, that, and in unending love and, and what God has set up, you know, that, that's the representation that He gives us there. Um, they symbolize your never ending love for one another and Christ's never ending love for you. Um, these rings are a reminder of the promise made to, to each other and to God tonight. So that, that's. You know, that's why rings are so special and why we're wearing those as So, Tanner, will you take this ring and place it on her ring finger? <coughs> Left hand. There you go. We already knew it. Good job. <laughs> uh, and this time you will repeat after me. With this ring, I thee win. And with all my worldly goods, I give you my love in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, Taylor, will you take this one? All right, and will you repeat after me, Taylor? With this ring, I thee wed. With all my worldly goods, I give you my love. I give you my love. In, the the in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Uh, at this time we're gonna light the unity candle and spend a moment with each other.
the minister in the state of Oklahoma. I am now pronouncing husband and wife, and Tanner, you may kiss your bride. Turn around and face the <laughs> <laughs>